Hello, 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 and welcome, my Taurus Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Mercury signs. Welcome to your Mercury Retrograde read for February to March 2020. I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons, president of Drawing the Circle Productions, professional witch, professional intuitive, and Virgo Sun, so I'm really working hard for my Earth signs <laughs> today in particular. Oh boy, what a day. I'm actually doing this on Valentine's Day, so I've been getting all sorts of client calls <laughs> last minute. So I'm glad to be uh, doing this uh, for YouTube and for you all. If you are new to the channel, please do like and subscribe, making my way to one thousand. A lot of cool shit goes down once you hit one thousand if you know how to play it. And I'm fun. I do know how to play it. Uh, so uh, go check out the video uh, link to the video below uh, for clarifying junk tarot. My promise to my subscribers <laughs> once a month. I'll get drunk and read cards for super live chat. And you can toss a coin to your witch. <laughs> cool, cool. Let's get down to business for this reading though, shall we? Mercury retrogrades a common. By the time you're watching this, you might already be in the the retrograde. So uh, let's definitely get down to business. This is a general read. Take what works, leave what doesn't. Reading all sorts of different people in uh, these collectives. That's why I always do sun, moon, rising, and in this case, mercury sign for uh, mercury retrograde. So do look up your mercury sign. I think that's just a wise idea considering uh, it's a planet that appears to be going backwards, but it's not actually going backwards. Um, and by the way, I find like when I watch readings for my Pisces moon, though I am a Virgo sun, it just it hits me in a different way. So, you know, take that into consideration. Cool, cool. Um, because th these readings, the spread that they gave me, I really love. It's an element spread. It's one of my favorites. I've been reading it professionally for decades. Uh, fire, earth, air, water, spirit. It's going to be a way of looking at this Mercury retrograde for how it's helping you, right? That the, the whole thing is the planet doesn't actually go backwards. Planets don't go backwards in their orbits, right? It's an optical illusion because of the different placements of orbits and stuff. Math, right? No thanks. Uh, so that being said, symbolically, I get it. Mercury, planet of thought. Hermes, messenger of the gods, right? Technology and communications. I get it. Retrograde, but really, it's to help us look at things differently, to kind of pull back so that we can see clearly and really, like, a, it's a bow and arrow. It's like we, we do this and then we shoot forward, right? So... You know, it's a brilliant thing to slow down, to reconsider, to rethink, to refeel, to revisit, right? That kind of stuff. Um, so this is not about how it's a pain in the ass, but I notice people making almost, you know, it's not even almost, it is self-fulfilling prophecies of things going horribly wrong. And so they kind of set themselves up for that. Uh, or make a, what's already a tricky sticky worse because, oh, Mercury retrograde, right? It becomes this collective thing where everything that happens in the quantum, in this quantum hologram called life on planet Earth, multidimensional and all of that, uh, is here to help the soul grow and evolve. And look, if we could, oh, if we could uh, grow and evolve purely from pleasure and bliss, oh, that would have been lovely. Doesn't even work that way, right? So the irritations in life, the delays are often for our benefit, but we don't often see that until uh, retrospect, right? Retrospect, retrograde. So good opportunity to even look back and see like how strong, look what you've lived through, how strong you are. You're still here, right? That kind of stuff. Cool. So now let's get down to the reading itself. Um, breathe as you go. I've been sharing the, the uh, element breaths. There are four elements, fire, earth, air, water, uh, fire, earth, air, water. There are four different ways to get oxygen and carbon dioxide in and out of the body. The one for earth signs or the element of earth is in through the nose, out through the nose. It's very grounding. So that's the one I'm going to use to stay in the present moment as much as I can throughout the reading. If you're doing the same, we're all tuning to that still point of the divine in the present moment, right? That's where I'm getting the reading from. If you're doing the same, you're tuning to the same vibe inside of you, right? So let's do this. Let's do this for my Torians. I love you guys so much. Ground and center. Take a few deep breaths. considering Mercury is an air sign, right? An air planet, I should say. Still point. 
My gods. <laughs> Please, five cards, element spread. Top five cards, element spread. For this Taurus Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Mercury sign. For this Mercury Retrograde, please. <sighs> what do they need to uh, reevaluate in their element of fire, their desires? What do they need to reconsider or uh, reappraise in their element of earth, what they have to get them what they want? What do they need to rethink in their element of air, the mind and the thoughts? What do they need to readdress, re-embrace, revisit emotionally in their element of water? And for their element of spirit, what is the soul's point of view of this? What is their highest self's point of view on this as a lens so that they can remember to try and see it this way or keep this in mind as they make their way through this Mercury <laughs> retrograde February to March 2020 my gods and goddesses ready here we go for the Taurians clean cut please maiden mother crone excellent no hangers sometimes with round cards they catch in the creases of your fingers and you get one that kind of like does that on the bottom of the cut and it annoys me <laughs> i ask for a clean cut i usually get it so uh what we're gonna do is that's daughters of the moon all the decks i read are at the bottom of the description box other cool stuff on its way down i plan it that way uh we're gonna do the same once these five are out with uh the doreen virtue healing with the angels oracle then we've got three other decks that we're going to uh bring you three other cards from so uh 20 uh sorry 13 cards total thought that was fitting for some reason oh and just to say this mercury retrograde starts on uh, february 16th but it ends in other words the planet goes direct on the 9th of March, which is also full moon in Virgo, which is ruled by Mercury. And I don't know why that's odd to me, but there's something there. I don't know what it is, right? So maybe for us Earth signs, right? Because you try and the Virgos, let's say something could happen, right? So anyway, element of fire. The first thing we need to look at here is what do you want? But to look at that again, and you've got the Virgo card. That's so weird. Yeah, it was in the air. They really wanted me to talk about that. So here it is. So look, is this another earth sign, Virgo person, sun, moon, rising, whatever, who knows that you want, right? But get in touch with the sixth house properties, right? What is Virgo sixth house about? Yes, it is an earth sign, but it's mutable earth like sand, like the constantly shifting sands, right? Which can wear away anything like sandpaper can, right? Uh, but it is definitely serviceable, can make its way into any crack or crevice, so think mutable earth. Something that you're wanting physically to change or something truly having to do with the sixth house principles of occupation and health. Now, occupation isn't just about work, what you do to make a living, it's what occupies you. That's why it's linked to health. So, if you are occupied with stress, that has a biochemical, physiological effect on your health, right? Where if you're, like right now, I am really occupied with breath work. Like Wim Hof, I'm totally doing the Wim Hof method. Look at it, W-I-M space H-O-F. I'm taking the cold showers and everything. It is amazing. It's changing my chemistry. I can feel it, right? Well, I'm a Virgo, right? I'm a Virgo Pisces moon. I'm totally down for that shit. Very mutable. You guys are fixed. I get it. But then we're looking here, like if you are what the thing that you want, it's really there to, to if you are occupied with it, it's supposed to contribute to your health. But is that the way it is being dealt with? Right. Because it wouldn't show up in a retrograde read. And it was like, yes, this is a good thing. But let's look at it from a, a different perspective. Let's rethink it. So what's your element of Earth like the matchstick that lights the match, right? The the wood that lights the fire, the fuel, the card of the star. Okay, major arcana card, major vibe of hope on this, feeling it, feeling it, feeling it like that steady, almost stubborn hope, which I love that Taurians have when they know it in their bones. That's more intuitive, but this is the physical position. This is about the element of earth, what they have and what they value, that you may very well value whatever this Virgo and virgin is another word, perhaps something untouched, unclaimed, unblemished by life, unowned, right? Um, there's a lot in there. Uh, that's why we have other cards we're going to lay down that will clarify that, I'm sure. But to not lose sight of your guidance and grace. That's what the star is to me. That's why you have to look up. 
right before compasses and maps, we had the Polaris, the North, the North Star. And if you couldn't find it because it was, I don't know, daytime, well, then you had the sun, right? you know, the, uh, east and west. Uh, but if you couldn't see it at night, you really could kind of screwed in terms of north, south, east, west. So keep tuning to your guidance, right? Whatever. To me, this is the most spiritual card in the whole tarot deck. Doesn't matter what deck it is, but particularly there's an Aquarian touch to this, obviously, pouring water from a breast urn. So there is something about a higher uh, stratospheric fixed air point of view here, and something that as a uh, Taurus, you can feel very fixed about certain values that you have, but if they're your spiritual values, that's gonna help you here somehow. Hmm. Let's look at the element of air, really important, right? This is all mercury mental stuff anyway. And we have another court card. This is Aries. Now, again, could be an Aries person influencing your mind, but if not Aries, first house, right? Very self-identified, self-ego personality. But what I'm getting for this is this more about you thinking about yourself, not necessarily being negatively self-centered, but to you do, do a little self-reflection, right, about who you believe you are. Who we are and who we believe we are aren't necessarily the same thing all the time, right? Because who we really are, we are spirits. We're, we're souls that were chosen to incarnate, right? But this Aries card can very much be about thinking about oneself in terms of self-care, self-love, self-esteem, right? Now, like I said, we've got other cards going down here. But if this is an actual Aries person in your life, then they are on your mind, this... Uh, this uh, Mercury retrograde, but also keep in mind they need not be that. It could be someone who is acting selfish. Now, to me, selfish really should be categorized as a neutral word at this point, because we know now, if you have ever been a caretaker, that if you do not take care of yourself, you burn out, right? You can't serve. I'm a Virgo. I had to learn that the Virgo way, which is usually <laughs> lower back issues, migraines, you know, like physical aches and pains. Um, Taurus, you know what I'm talking about. So is there a turn of really needing to reflect uh, inwards toward the, towards the self to rethink things about yourself or maybe even to rethink your own identity? We identify with different things throughout our paths in life. Like I used to be a total fucking rebel. Now, not that I'm a joiner now, but I'm so much easier, you know, it's so much easier because I'm going to be 52 this year. That probably has a lot to do with it. But we're always having to rethink things about ourselves when better than a Mercury retrograde. Just saying. Let's look at your emotions here. Well, here we've got, you now the name of the card is Burnout, but it's the Eight of Wands, which if you think of the Rider Waite Tarot, right? It's all those wands soaring through the air. Fast movement, but fast movement of fire. Hence, like, the burnout, the watching, I hate watching forest fires, man. I know I have dryad blood spirit in me somewhere. I can't bear to even hear a fucking chainsaw, right? Just draw. Uh, trees are so sacred to me. Past life druid, you think? Maybe. <laughs> Definitely. So there's, there's this thing here of this fast moving emotion, and maybe it's passion. And passion sounds all romantic and sexual, but remember, there are crimes of passion too. That uh, often passion blocked becomes anger and rage, not just frustration and revenge. So um, watch your element of fire, my Taurians. Keep in mind what Capricorns, Taurians, and Arians have in common are horns. Now, you could say Sagittarius too, because sometimes you see them as the Kentor, uh, the Centaur, the Kentor, uh, but really it's the Archer. <laughs> it's a little less distinct that way. So you might even well be going through some emotional burnout here, sort of reduced to ashes a little bit, and really needing to connect and heal, right? To rejuvenate, that what you want is to occupy yourself on your health or get yourself a healthy occupation, sort of reviving yourself emotionally, but you do have your spiritual path. You have that, you have your spiritual values, whatever they are, your higher principles, at least hope. And look, the grace of hope I have to deal in every single day, not just for me to do what I do, but to help people. The grace of hope, there's maiden, there's mother, there's crone, right? The maiden grace is humility. The mother grace is hope. 
oh, great mother, God, grant me the grace of hope that somehow this is part of some divine plan, making everything better for the well-being of all, evolving my soul, that somehow I find my way through this. The grace of hope is the golden thread that takes you through the labyrinth of the mysteries of life. Um, doesn't t show you where you're going, right? It's just this, right? Hope, moment by moment. And to, to really have hope for yourself, have hope for your path, if that is really... I mean, I'm getting that for some of you. Yeah, there might be people who are kind of pushing you in this direction that might be a little bossy or a little childish, mm. kind of making you reevaluate, think about, well, what do I want? What do I want out of this? You know, who do I want to be? Is that is this who I want to be? Perfect time. Again, perfect for a Mercury retrograde to rethink stuff like that. But you might be getting a little angry, ragey, or very, very passionate about it, or completely just like, don't care, burned out. Makes sense. Rest during a retrograde. Lovely. The point of view to take it from... We've got the Nine of Pentacles, right? I love the Nine of Pentacles, Malama, Polynesian fertility goddess, right? She's got her gourd, she's got her full breast, she is just divine mother in earth form. Not a ten, but a nine, right? You're good on your own, right? God bless the goddess that's got her own, right? Not necessarily a virgin in that sense, like the Virgo who is untouched, but this is has her own, her own money, her own whatever, her own physical stuff, so that you really have everything that you need with you right now. Um, certainly, <laughs> no person is an island. We all love having people in our lives from time to time, but for right now, it's like, it feels like you've got what you need to take care of yourself, at least in terms of the physical sustenance aspect of it. Now, just to check, you've got fire, you've got earth, you've got earth. Uh, yeah, so no water, but a spirit card, right? So no air, no water. All right, good, good, good. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Let's ask the angels to clarify, though. It's going to help. Nice deep breath. What was the breath again? All right. Oh, do you notice how much I speed up, though, if I don't? do this. I mean, nobody needs a reading to go on forever, but oh, it just feels so much better. My angels, please, still point. Please, my angels, for this Taurus collective, sun, moon, rising, Mercury signs, for this Mercury retrograde, top five cards, element spread, please clarify, for this Taurus collective, sun, moon, rising, Mercury signs, please. Uh, fire, earth, air, water, spirit, just like the gods threw down, please clarify for them for this Mercury retrograde, February to March 2020. Clean cut, maiden, mother, crown. There we go. Rock and roll. Just going to switch to that. Uh, let's have a look see duck -see. My angels, what are you saying about this Virgo card, what they want? Now, the Virgo with music. Get that music is very serviceable, and it's something that you can occupy, occupy yourself with that actually can change things within the body. For example, the metabolism, the metabolic rate, the heart rate, the breathing rate, right? Like, if there's music, if you can sort of... It's sort of like what you want here is this occupation that allows you to kind of keep the beat and move along and keep moving. I mean, it really, <laughs> what is the playlist of your life or what is the playlist you want your life to have right now? By the way, there's a good bunch of you that are musicians that might be a little challenged usually uh, in terms of the communicating uh, musically, particularly if you're, you know, writing uh, stuff, but to really try and find some sort of expression through music, something that you can occupy yourself with, even if it's getting lost in instrumentals or singing or drumming or what have you, that there's a musical element here, and they always say to me with this card, remember every song has different parts to it, right? They, they have uh, peaks, codas, you know, I studied music way back when, once it got mathematic, I was out. I was like, I'll go back to tarot, thanks. I've been reading tarot since I'm 12. <laughs> music came later. You imagine that? if I had become a rock star, I'd been dead by now. No question. 
no question there. Uh, but they, but then they say a music definitely has a every song has a beginning and an end, right? So just keep in mind, be practical about it. This Mercury retrograde has a beginning and an end. That this too shall pass. But that there is something that you want here that is serviceable. Whatever it is that you want, see how music's involved. But that what you have to help you get there, remember, is this card of the star, hope in its most general sense, your own personal spiritual path and your spiritual values uh, in a more spiritual sense with harmony. See, like to come in harmony with your higher self. Great way to look at the star, by the way. Actually, the eighth chakra often called the star center uh, changes from philosophy to philosophy, the eighth chakra, the home of the higher self, some say. All right. So take that as you want to take it. But harmony, like in music, are not two notes right next to each other. There's space. So this might be about you saying, all right, I need to take some space. I need to retro out of some people's energy spaces here to find my own, to connect with that which I already have, that which is already within me, that which is not just my legacy and my birthright, but the truth of who I am. Bam. Bam. Thank you, my gods and my angels. They just talk through me. I'm sure they pass around my crown chakra like open mic night. Uh, it's just weird when they do it on a date. <laughs> just going to say. Uh, so in the mental here, again, we've got these this Aries card. First sign of the Zodiac. Baby of the Zodiac. Childish or childlike, take your pick. Mentally, it's a spectrum. And certainly there's degrees in between those two. Uh, but there is that thing of the mind and of the head very, very much in the mental sphere. So what's that got to do hmm, with listening? Now... Re-listen, rethink, know that, that you know, the, the, the voices in your head, that there's something about listening to them, there's something about listening to the ego versus the personality versus, as referenced here, the higher self. To take some time in this retrograde to pull back and listen. All right, here's what I mean about selfishness, right? I'm going back to that because they just hit it. Think of the word, the phrase, I should say, higher selfishness. What are you doing tonight? I'm going to get all higher selfish. Who see what does that mean? I don't know. I'm going to find out. I'm going to go talk to my higher self for a few hours. I'm going to go pray. I'm going to go meditate. I'm going to go think. I'm going to go contemplate. I'm going to go focus on myself, my path, who I want to be. And then I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. I'm going to say, hey, <laughs> listen, I'm going to take a step. That I'm going to listen, right? That, and by the way, it's also saying for a Taurus, which you guys are usually really good at this, just keep your ears open and, and to the ground, right? Keep, keep an ear out and down, right? Keep an ear out on what's going on. You might be hearing some stuff, and I don't just mean in the airwaves. I mean, pay attention. <laughs> pay attention. Listen to what's being said around you. There might be some puzzle pieces in the air, so to speak. Um, which then brings you to this emotional burnout. Now, again, that can it's so weird because it's almost opposite ends of what this card can mean is what I'm feeling like both are true. That there's, oh, yes, and this is over an arc of time. I get it. That there is a lot of passionate feelings and emotions going on, and I really want, and I really, like, somehow with this Virgo thing with music, like, there, that possibility of passion, like, again, Eight of Wands soaring through the air. But then there's also the ashes of it and the, the arid nature, the, the, the dry nature of it to how ash is. So it might be from one going to the other, from this fast motion to just like whoosh, depletion. But know that ash is brilliant fertilizer, that even burnt forests, the seeds under the ground with the rains. <laughs> In the spring when the sun's low, becomes the rose, oh, becomes the new forest. Play with your metaphors. Just uh, just be clear about them eventually, right? So this burnout, what do the angels have to say about that? That emotionally there are blessings here. That it is often <laughs> when we're sort of peak and then <laughs> crash that 
there can be a blessing in that, that there is some sort of emotional thing happening here for you that even if you are emotionally arid, that there's a blessing in that giving you to, oh, I get it, like, okay, all right, all right, all right. So someone who's really, really driven in their career with their family in a relationship, very, very passionate, forgets to perhaps, I don't know, take care of themselves, right? That they may be so in service as an earth sign, Taurus, that they, they kind of lose track of that. And so they come a little out of harmony, but they need to get back to their faith, to their hope that things will get better. Take care of them. Listen to themselves. Listen to their bodies, not just their minds. Listen to get higher selfish. Listen to that spirit. Um, because then if that really is that emotional burnout to ashes where you're just like, then you really have to do this. You may have to take a break and retrograde yourself to receive the blessings available. Now, because the blessings are in the field of water, the correlate to that feeling of burnout can be peace. I can't move and it's kind of okay. <laughs> we all get there. But then it'll be obvious that you need to rehydrate. <laughs> hydrate, Taurus, hydrate. Let's, again, but that's why I love this last card of spirit. This really is about you being fulfilled, you being taken care of, you perhaps taking care of yourself with that, um, that Aries card in your mind, but uh, certainly doesn't mean that you can't ask for help along the way too. So what do the angels have to say about that? Yeah, 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 balance, all right? So this is all about, I gotta get myself into physical balance. So really the issue here may not necessarily be people asking too much, although it can feel that way for any earth sign because we're good at what we do. Usually people come to us for stuff they know we do well if we've ever helped them before. And saying no is tricky, I think more so for Virgo than Taurus. Uh, we are the servants of the Zodiac, the Virgos, but this is really saying I could probably heal and get away with a lot more and enjoy myself a lot more, but I need to take care of myself physically. Like, are you putting out more than you're taking in financially, for example? Because this is looking through the lens of the Nine of Pentacles. I'm good. That's what this card has always said. I'm good. Even when the woman with the hood of falcon, like in the garden, right? Right? I'm good. No, I'm good. That's how I look. I'm good. Don't worry about me. I got my own. That's Malama, right? In balance. Not M I M N I N, in balance. Cool, cool. Let's get you a, a, a Chuck Spazano Love Pack card. Baby Love Pack card. Uh, what we're looking at here is the voices of the Ascended Masters, just one, because we're only doing 13 cards in total for this spread. So let's take a few nice, deep, earthy breaths and see what we get. Mmm, still point. Oh, my Ascended Masters, you who have played this game and must love when it's Mercury Retrograde season, we must be like sitcoms for you all. Please, one card in clarity for this Taurus Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Mercury sign. For this Mercury Retrograde, February to March 2020, a piece of luck, a piece of the problem, a piece of healing, or a piece of grace, please, from this Chuck Spazano deck for this Taurus Collective Mercury Retrograde. All right, pretty basic, but still worth knowing. You got the problem suit of fear. Uh, fear of some kind. Now, this is a keynote. This is like a reminder. This is a bit of a theme to deal with the fears. Now, look, I get that nobody wants to burn out, but sometimes we do it because we're afraid of what will happen if we say no instead of saying yes when someone asks us to do something. It's different for work if you're on the clock. That is literally a financial obligation. I don't get that feeling here, but I do feel like there is something going on here where you're being knocked out of balance, out of fear. Now look, don't freak out. That can be as simple as, uh, I, 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 uh, you know, in that moment someone asks you to do something and you go, uh, 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 it's just easier to say yes. Um, but this is a retrograde. You're really kind of being, <laughs> are you afraid of being considered selfish? 
have people been, let's say, lower selfish? I don't like making that distinction higher or lower, but I think it works for this conversation, right? For this reading, it's like uh, there's a difference between being selfish, narcissistic, yeah, now that's the word in our uh, our current vocabulary in the world, narcissistic. There are different forms of narcissist, too. It ain't just the overt. There's covert. There's a bunch of them. Look at those, the passive, uh, the aggressive ones are the ones we're, we're used to. Uh, is that what you're afraid of? Are you afraid of appearing a certain way, of being selfish instead of self-care, self-nurturing? Just because I know earth signs, we tend to do that more, I think, than the other signs. Like Aries don't care. <laughs> Gemini's don't care, right? They will appear however the hell they want. Like Leo's will care, but just as long as they look good doing it, right? Uh, but, but for earth signs, this might be an opportunity for you to really look at what some of your fears are, embrace them, own them, but not be ruled by them, right? Because there's a blessing in this burnout that I think is going to show you uh, some new things about your spirit and your soul and what you're actually capable of in terms of your healing when you are properly occupied. Hmm. Uh, let's ask the higher self, your higher self and the higher self of all involved with the Whisper of Love Oracle. Love These often tells you exactly what it's about or what to do about it. Oh, it feels good. <sighs> Sorry, I did it out through the mouth. Still point. Oh, the higher selves of all involved, please. One card in clarity for this Taurus Collective. Sun, moon, rising, Mercury sign for this Mercury retrograde. February 2020. To March uh, 2020, please, 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 one card in clarity, a whisper of love for this Taurus collective, for this Mercury retrograde. Mm -hmm. Express love through gifts. Interesting, the selfish take on this that I'm getting, this might include you too. Express love through gifts. Giving a small token to someone expresses your love to them. Now look. For other people, there could be a hook in that. But with Taurians, I find, because they are fixed earth, they're, they're, the second house is about lifelong values, solid values, like values that don't change that much like bedrock, that when a Taurus gives you something, thought went into it or care went into it, right? Either a really, really like symbolic, meaningful thought, something that they value that way, or just that they care about you, so they're like, here, just take this, right? It, it Simple things, right? It's through gifts, simple, simple. Uh, giving a small token to someone expresses your love to them. So perhaps if you are needing to retrograde the fuck out of people's space for a little bit, and who doesn't every now and again, so that you can rethink, reinvent, that word came out, like see yourself differently from this more stable place, because I think you're way more stable than you give yourself credit for, perhaps, but that you're burned out emotionally, which is, check your adrenals. <laughs> I never tell people what to do, but like, when we're working, 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 drinking coffee, drinking coffee, sometimes it's just our adrenals need a break, right? Uh, there might be something physiological going on, I'm not saying for everybody in the collective, but that's what I mean, there's something very physical earth, um, because of what you want, essentially has to do with the service, the occupation, and the healing of the body and the earth uh, form. So to give yourself some little gifts, the higher self is saying to simple tokens, small tokens to yourself and others, particularly if you need to retreat, just say, well, you know, I needed to go for a walk, but I saw this and I thought of you, right? Just to tell people you love them, right? Even if you don't tell them exactly what's going on, I have this policy in my life. People can know what I'm going through, but they're not allowed to witness it, right? That's my dignity. Thank you very much. Virgo, cross your legs. I recommend it to everybody. <laughs> Unless you're a drama queen. <laughs> I may have my queenie moments, but not drama queen. I know people who disagree. We all have our moments. Let's go with uh, the Healing Mantra deck by Matt Kahn to get you a mantra. Something to chant, to sing with that music card to kind of get the beat of, to feel the feeling of. And we're going to ask the Ascended Masters for that card. So nice couple of deep breaths. Hmm. <sighs> Sorry, that one was out through the mouth needed to be. Still point. 
my Ascended Masters, the perfect, perfect, perfect healing mantra, please, for this Taurus Collective, hey, <laughs> sun, moon, rising, Mercury sign for this Mercury retrograde, February 2020 into March 2020, please, what is the perfect mantra to see them through this? that they can focus on in their mind that will help them achieve what they want to achieve and get the very best and the very blessed out of this Mercury retrograde for the well-being of all. Now, if you're new to my readings, this deck is really cool. One side's got the mantra, the other side has the name of the mantra. Otherwise, there's not much written on it. But with the name of the mantra, I can look it up in the bookie book that Matt Kahn wrote. Short but brilliant stuff, very insightful. So who did you get? Rewiring the nervous system. I find strength in surviving my traumas. Hence, perhaps, this occupation and healing, the need for self-healing, that you have survived some stuff and that there are blessings to come as a result of your emotional burnout. Maybe the worst is kind of sort of over. It would make sense, though, that to find harmony in the values of your uh, your spiritual path of hope, that it is often, well, St. Teresa of Avila. I learned this through Carolyn Mace. In terms of entitled, we're not entitled to anything as souls in this world except hope. <laughs> we're all entitled to hope, right? It's like air. You're entitled to as much air as you're going to get in this life. The same with hope. So rewiring the nervous system, the mantra... I find strength in surviving my traumas. And really, it's it's at the core of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Um, and Taurians, it's true. You all are durable as bedrock. You really, really are. Um, so let's, uh, let's get you the bookie book on that. Rewiring the nervous system. <laughs> Rewiring the nervous system. I find strength in surviving my traumas. When the nervous system is rewired, you are no longer trapped in the memories of your body. Earth sign. You are the courageous hero or heroine of your present reality, honoring every moment of hardship as the means through which your infinite strength and greatest depth of character is revealed. In other words, what you've been through, the journeys, the ups and downs, the hero's journey is making you a hero through all of this. And it's all about your development, right? And finding your greatest strength and greatest depth of character. As you rewire your nervous system, you are no longer responding to life from the vantage point of your painful past, but instead are open to each encounter being more miraculous than the moment before. And miraculous in a very interesting way that I, I know that feeling. It's like, I can't believe I lived through that and here I am and now this is going on and now this is going on. And you begin to see the pieces of the puzzle of the divine plan little by little. Maybe not all at once and maybe not all of them in that process, but enough of them to go, okay, I get that. <laughs> this is your saving grace here and you already have it. It's in your earth. Uh, this mantra is ideal for adjusting to life after loss possibility for everybody, healing heartbreak and becoming more optimistic, rewiring the nervous system. Uh, I find strength in surviving my traumas. Let's give you your overview because things often pop out that I did not see beforehand. That's what an overview is for. Magic clap. We start you off in the fire positions with an earth card, the Virgo card, the Maiden of Pentacles, right? Which would be the Knight of Pentacles, which is also the slowest moving knight. They're reminding me here with that card of music. So what you want might be a more healthier occupation, right? Maybe either literally what you do for a living, one that you're able to care for yourself more, or there's a possibility a musical one there as well. But whatever it is that you want, uh, with that musical element of it, certainly find a way to express yourself with it, whether it's through listening music or writing music or just there's some musical element there. Even if it's just that this is a song that will have a beginning, middle and end and may be dramatic at times, but will eventually pass in a Mercury retrograde uh, phase in particular. And what you have to get you through this or to get you whatever that occupation, Earth sign Virgo thing is, uh, is the star with harmony really to come 
come into alignment with your source. Come into alignment with your spiritual values. Who do you want to be? What would love do, right? <laughs> what would compassion do? What What's healthy? What's healing? Not what's spiritual, because everybody's got an opinion on that. But what is it with my spirit? How can I come into alignment with my guiding star? And indicative of that is focus on the self and the mental field there, listening with that Aries card, uh, the Maiden of Flames, which in this uh, in this deck that would be considered, uh, believe it or not, the King of Wands, because it's Aries, Cardinal Fire. So perhaps thinking of taking initiative, right, to take care of the self, to listen to the self, to not just listen to the body, but to perhaps listen to what the mind is telling you from a more spiritual vantage point. Point in terms of self-care, taking care of the self, because remember, we've got this thing about surviving traumas here. So it might be that, yes, you've survived a collective trauma, not just your own, maybe somebody else or, you know, a family or a community. And so now it's really about you having to kind of deal with your own pain. I know, Torians, you're strong like that. People rely upon you all the time. This might really be time for you to bring yourself into balance, as indicated by that spirit card because we look at the card of water and we've got burnout in the emotions with uh, blessings. Now, sure, there are blessings coming and maybe this blessing is that you do have more of the passion, f rolling flame kind of uh, thing, that, that, that wildfire energy, but I'm still getting a touch of that ash in there, some more than others, some way more than others. So that there are blessings available to you that perhaps you're not feeling because of the emotional burnout, but then again, going to that card of spirit, the nine of pentacles, that to see it as, you know what, I'm okay, I just need to get my balance, I have what I need here, but I really need to focus on what are my values, how do I occupy myself in a way that heals me, and how about I listen to some music as I go along, because it affects me physiologically in some way, even if it's just environmentally in the background. The Ascended Masters are talking about fear here, so of course there are some fears that may loom that really in the mental, you need to kind of listen to those fears, but not have them rule you. To go higher selfish, how about bringing those fears uh, to your spirit, asking for help, perhaps feeling the fear and moving through it, because the only way out is through sometimes, and by facing the lion on our path, we find it is a lamb, <laughs> right? Uh, particularly if there are decisions involved. It's not often until we make the decision that we realize we didn't have all that much to be afraid of, right? Sort of very much the fool card there. Um, and by the way, in terms of your other relationships with people, if this really is all about you taking care of you, remember, express love through gifts. Giving a small token expresses your love to them, them. And of all the cards that could have come through from that deck, I think that's actually might be pivotal in giving you some space and some freedom by people really understanding, well, they do so much, it's okay. And look, they're even still willing to give us a little token. You know, like if you go to the beach for the day, find them a, a shell or a rock or something, right? Uh, because this mantra, I, I find strength in surviving my traumas. Rewiring the nervous system is kind of sort of worth it, right? If you can really take the time and grieve what needs to be grieved, even if that is complete emotional aridness, to just be in that place, maybe that is part of you having been through the trauma and now finding your strength in it. So re remember that mantra, write that one down, it's a good one. I find strength in surviving my traumas. So there you go, my Taurian sun, moon, rising, Mercury signs, May, the Taurus, sun, moon, rising, Mercury signs collective be blessed with all that they need this Mercury retrograde to heal, right? To become inspired in harmony with their true self, to be the gift for themselves, to deal with, embrace any fear that's going on with the blessings available to them by finding their strength just by in a retrograde looking over their shoulder, look at all. May they see all the traumas that they have survived and get truly the knowledge, the in the body knowledge of that strength that they may know their true worth and what they are capable of in this world for the well-being of all. So mote it be. And so it is.
Thank you so much for watching my Torians. Please like and subscribe. Help me reach my goals. Uh, otherwise, wishing you the very best and the very blessed of this Mercury retrograde. As I say, as I always do it, I sign off. Hail, farewell, and blessed be.